Hi, I'm John Peters, and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about framing and presentation. Now I have here a Japanese print block. It's an antique, and uh, I had framed two of these for a client a few years ago. And they hung in their home side by side. But they've since found two more print blocks, and what they'd like to do now is hang them more like a totem. So it'll be a very, um, it's actually like a Donald Judd inspired installation. Now if you don't know who Donald Judd is, if you Google his name and images, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my measurements, select my wood, and I'll get started. Before I start building the frame, I thought I'd take a minute just to explain what a Japanese print block is. And um, it's basically a, a block for making prints. You can see that there's holes that make it very easy to grab in your hand. And uh, I'm assuming that they would stamp it in ink and then stamp the fabric. I'll be making the frames out of poplar, which is a good choice for a painted finish. For the outside edge of the frame, it's one by six poplar ripped down to three and a quarter. Now you can see I've milled a rabbit into the back of the, the inside of the frame, and now I'm going to miter it and nail it together. Because I know my frame is square, meaning it's 18 inches square, 18 and a half inches square, I'll measure from the long point out to 18 and a half inches on the first one. I'll cut this side and that, that will be my guide for the rest of the cuts. I'm going to put a mark on the first one I cut and all my measurements will come off of that first one. I'll stand it up and with a sharp pencil point well, you want to line this edge up. You want to line the points up flush. And then with a sharp pencil point. And I'll do that for this one. My four sides are cut. And now I'm going to nail them together with a few one inch brads. The poplar is soft enough where uh, it's pretty easy just to hold in place while you nail it. So I now have the frame nailed together, and I need to make this piece of molding here. It's half of an inch wide by two inches deep. And I can get that piece of molding from the off cut from the first cut I did on the one by six. Uh, I cut it three and a quarter, and so my off cut is about two and an eighth. So I'll trim this down to two inches, and then I'll resaw it to half of an inch. cut my molding and now I need to attach it. That's this piece of molding right here. It's on the inside of the frame. It gets placed in the frame flush with the back of that rabbit cut that I had cut earlier in the outside piece of the frame. Now that's there to give me more space so when I go to attach the back I have something to screw into. Okay, that's the last piece of molding. Now it's always a good idea to wipe off any excess glue before it dries. You do that with just a wet rag. So now the frame is done. The backs are cut and primed. And what I'm going to do is sand the frame, being careful not to round over the edges. And once I finish sanding the frame, I'm going to prime it with a Benjamin Moore Fresh Start. And that will sort of raise the grain 
And once the, the uh, primer is dry, then I'll fill the nail holes with just regular spackle. And then once the spackle's dry, I'll sand the primer and the spackle at the same time, and then I'll be ready for a finished coat. Well, I'm just about done. The two frames here are just primed. They need two coats of finish, and then they'll be ready to be delivered and installed. But there's something worth mentioning, and that's how the paintings or these frames are going to hang. I'm going to use something called a French cleat, and that'll keep them uh, perfectly straight and the spacing in between the frames perfect. Let me show you how that works. Now on the back of the frame, I have a piece of wood with a 25 degree angle on it. And I have another piece of wood ex with the exact same angle. This piece of wood gets attached to the wall and then the frame will sit right on top of it and it locks in place. And this is just another example. The piece of plywood here in my shop just represents the wall where the artwork will go. And this is a block of wood with the same 25 degree angle. And then you just take the artwork, put it slightly above, and then it just drops right into place. Well, I'm just about done. I'll take the uh, blocks out, paint the frames up, and hopefully get this finished so I can install it tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.